I asked you what you thought was the greatest season in Apex was, what would your answer be? Well, after 19 seasons, I wanted to figure out what. If we could compile everything that makes a season great, could we find a score and which season would come out on top? Because can a season truly be great if the legend that was released was absolute garbage? What about seasons that had terrible map changes, but great weapon metas? Or how about seasons filled with new game modes, but didn't introduce a new legend? Today I want to go through every season in Apex's history to determine which season was truly the best. Well, I did that. And it turns out, no other season comes close. What's poppin' decoys? In preparation for season 20, I wanted to go down memory lane and, uh, math to figure out what was the greatest season in Apex Legends ever. And to do this, I needed a formula, something that could factor in what makes a season great. For example, typically the more updates a season receives, the more enjoyable it can be, as it stops the game from becoming stale. Of course, new legends, weapons, and maps count for more, as they're usually the main draw of a new season. Balance changes and bug fixes are important, but typically on the back burner. And lastly, community feedback. What was the overall perception of this season? Now look, this may be a pretty straightforward formula, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I'll never do this again. Let me explain. Two factors in particular are incredibly hard to quantify. Let's compare two seasons, season 10 and season 3. Now whether you think season 10 is better than season 3 is all up to you, but season 3 had 44 bug fixes throughout the season, and season 10, it had 93. Now look, season 9 had 122 bug fixes, yeah, but you start to see that just because a season gets a lot of bug fixes, it doesn't necessarily mean that that season was any more enjoyable. Not to mention that bug fixes is a pretty broad term that could cover entire server issues and a skin texture pack. The same goes for balance changes. Some are minuscule in the grand scheme of things while the others are huge. So the number of balance changes doesn't really matter. A season like season 10 with Seer being absolutely busted with multiple nerfs and emergency balance patches, then the following season, season 11, doesn't mean that the season 10 meta was more balanced than the season 11, cause most would say no. So we can't use those factors when trying to determine the all time greatest season. So here's what I came up with. Now, it's not perfect, but I think it gets the job done. Some things are self explanatory, like new ledges and weapons, but if we got a new map, that counts for more. Reworks, items, and town takeovers count for 5 points. New game modes, events are separate. Because a new game mode is permanent. While events have LTMs, not every town takeover had an LTM. So if they had both, we'll give 15 points. If a season had a good rank system, it will be awarded up to 10 points. And another 10 points on whether or not the community as a whole enjoyed the season at the time. So, a season like season 2 with a new legend, no new map because map changes don't count, two new hop ups, the introduction of ranked, two town takeovers, each with their own limited time modes, a decent rank system, and even though season two had the first ever collection event, the reception towards them, the method of unlocking the heirloom did stir negative feedback. The introduction of Watson did slow down the game with people playing more passive and bunkering down. The disruptive matter, although was a big thing and broken, it was only for that season. All in all, it gets half as many points in this regard, giving season 2 a season score of 90, meaning it was a good season. Using this formula and applying it to every season, we get a graph that looks like <laughs> we get a graph that looks like this. No surprise, season 1 is dead last with a season score of 30. It was the first Apex season. An awful battle pass, little to no content, but the game was still fresh and the elite queue was nice. Going further up past the 70 point mark, this is where I consider the benchmark for a good season. Seasons like season 11, season 5, season 9 and season 15 also cracks this mark. At the 90 point mark, these are considered the best of the best like season 4, season 7 and a pleasant surprise season 16 with a score of 100. Now some things are pretty surprising, season 6, widely considered one of the worst seasons because of the armor change that reduced all shields. Even though this season had crafting the vault SMG and new modes with the September soiree, 
It's clear that the armor change left a huge mark on people's feelings towards that season, even though it only lasted two weeks, which is why it has the same score as season of seven, a season most players would call the best season in Apex. Season 12 had a really low score, it lost a lot of points for having a really bad rank system and poor public reception. Remember, this was a season that made it super easy to hit masters. Season 8 had a potential score of 120. However, during the War Games event, the limited time modes that were supposed to be released were bugged and some were only available for a few hours and had to be put on hold. So instead of 5 new LTMs, I was only able to count 2, Armor Regen and Ultra Zones. Still, it got a season score of 90. So that's all of them. What were you the most surprised? Hold on. We're missing one. Yeah. Season 3 with a season score of 165. Because this season added Crypto, although it was trash, people knew his potential at high level. The Charge Rifle, although cancerous, I don't know, man. World's Edge, one of the best maps in the game. The anvil receiver and double tap hop-ups, balanced yet useful hop-ups. They sit in the middle right between disruptor rounds and hammer points and the quick draw. The Mirage Voyage Town Takeover, the first fight night event, the beloved Winter Express, Duos LTM. Yeah, there was a time when trios was the only mode you could play. It wasn't permanent until season four. And of course, the Grand Soiree. Seven unique limited time modes featuring gold rush duos, live, die, live, always be closing, third person mode, armed and dangerous on world's edge. Yeah, the OG world's edge, King's Canyon after dark and dummies big day. These were seven modes in one week, creating unique, memorable moments. <laughs> Even though the season scored a zero in ranked because of the dashboard exploit that many used to get to Diamond and Apex Predator, statistically, season three is the greatest season in Apex Legends. Some other interesting trends show that the peak of Apex was, no surprise, season two to season nine. You can see that this is the lowest stretch of seasons from season 12 to 14, even though season 13 had the best ranked season of the bunch. And you can see the recent seasons have been on a pretty decent run. Season 16 managed to kick 2023 off with a bang. But the following seasons have been pretty lukewarm at best. With the displeasing rank system lowering their score. But another thing I noticed was event sales. Events like the Dark Depths, Summer, and Black Friday sales are events that have skins featured as content. With no LTM coming in with them. Now I'm all for buying what you want. Some of these skins in Apex are actually pretty good, but outcasting those that aren't willing to spend money to participate in a new event is a problem. And as the seasons have gone by, there have only been more of them. From season 1 to season 10, there have only been 3 event sales. But from season 11 to 19, there have been 35. That's more than 10 times more event sales. Think about it. These are events with skins featured as content. I don't know how long it takes for Apex to make a new skin, but how hard is it for them to just enable an event to come with those skins? And remember, we've only had mixtape for only a year now, and arenas only lasted for about two. So either you had to deal with the matchmaking of pubs, or you had to just go into ranked to find your own fun. Season 1 to Season 10 had 32 events, not counting Valentine's Day duos and Horizon's OE experiment. Season 11 to 19 had 24. So we've not only been getting less events, but we've been getting more shop offers disguised as events. Look, it's no surprise that Apex has been dwindling in player count, but the engagement and the sales have only gone up. Quick question, how many of you actually participated in the latest event and bought a few skins here or there? How many of you only participated in the event only to get the rewards? Or well, the only excitement you had in the event was the fact that new skins were dropping. Maybe this is just the future of Apex. But if the quality of the recent events are anything to go by, I think Respawn might be trying to get their hands dirty in order to bring some major changes to the game. And you and I can only hope it's for the better. Hope you enjoyed the video. I love Apex. And if you do, watch this video as I go over the magic that was 
Apex Legends. Be mighty.